All right, what up YouTube? We are back here with another video and today we're gonna do some cooling mods to the M3. As you guys can see right now, we have the stock charge cooler, which is plastic here, metal here, then plastic here. And running all this boost tends to make that thing crack. Uh, right now we have no issues with it, but we still wanna upgrade that just to be safe. We're gonna be pushing around 36 PSI boost. So that is eventually going to fail if we don't change it out. Now, we also got this oil thermostat that goes in right here and that will make the thermostat open up a little sooner to keep the oil temps a little bit down as well. We also have a machine metal oil cooler that's already installed down there so that also helps with oil cooling but this little thermostat thing that goes right here should help a little bit more. So this is the charge cooler that I went with. It is the CSF one. This one is well worth the money. Everyone says to buy the nice quality one like the CSF, Mishimoto, or the Turner one. Everything else is garbage is what I've been told. So if you buy like the cheap eBay one, I mean, it'll work, but it's not the best one out there. So upgrade it once, cry once. Um, yeah, this was a pretty penny, but we got it and it's gonna keep my M3 running nice and cool. Big shout out to ECS for sending this out to me. And then right over here is the oil thermostat kit I was talking about. We're basically gonna pull the old one out see how all this assembles and then uh put this in exactly how the old one comes out now the cool thing is that this little plate right here is billet and it has a little bit of uh heat sinks on it so it'll look a little nice in the engine bay as well all right first things first we're going to start with taking off the charge cooler just so we can get this valve cover out of the way as well so then we can get access to this so starting off with the charge cooler first got to pull off this piping here which is very simple very easy and then pull off this engine cover um, after that, we're going to pull off the hoses. After that, I'm going to try to siphon as much as I can out of this, um, just so we don't have a bunch of coolant falling around, splashing around. That's the number one thing I hate about doing stuff on cars is coolant spills. So I'm going to try my best to get as much as I can out of there before pulling this all the way out. And as you guys can see, we have some caps here that come on this one. So I'm going to try to either put these in the lines or on the uh, OEM cooler just to keep the spillage down to a minimum. Another thing to note is that you get a baggie of hardware and you're definitely going to want to use this hardware. Do not reuse the OEM hardware on this cooler because the OEM cooler has plastic parts and so the threads are a little bit different. So you're definitely going to want to use the hardware included with this cooler. But yeah, I'm gonna get started with pulling all this stuff off. It shouldn't be too long. Um, so the next time you see it, It'll be all torn apart. All right, we got the stock charge cooler out. So basically I sat here with this little turkey baster thing and siphoned as much as I can out of the reservoir right there. And then when I pulled these lines, I immediately capped off the other two ends using the caps that came with the CSF one. So that made it spill very little bits of coolant. We had a little bit of spillage here, a little bit of spillage right there, but for the most part, not too bad, so I'm pretty proud of myself for that. All right, now it's time to take off these brackets and transfer them over to the new cooler. These are all held in by T30s. Like I said earlier in the video, make sure to use the new hardware that they include because here's the OEM hardware. See how like those threads are super thick? And then here's the new hardware, super fine threads because you're going into metal and not into plastic. Just took off these two screws right here. These are going to be T25s. And then we also cannot forget about the map sensor. I think these are T30s. Pretty much had everything transferred over. I used these flat little hardware ones on all these brackets. And then I used the like rounded one on the map sensor over here. Um, and then right here where the reservoir bolts to the cooler, you use these long ones along with the nuts included. There we go, guys. The new cooler is basically installed. Man, it looks freaking insane. It looks so much better than the stock one. And oh, right here is gonna be some tight clearances. This was already hitting before because of the port injection plate. So I think it's gonna be rubbing even more now right here. Next thing to do is fill this up with coolant and then do the bleeding process, which means go inside the car, turn it on, put the heat, the lowest fan speed, and then the hottest temperature. And then you press and hold on the gas pedal for 10 seconds. Also, you gotta turn the headlights on so the car didn't turn off during this whole process. About five minutes later, this thing will start bleeding itself. And you do that process about two times. So when everything turns off, the headlights will turn off. And then that means the first bleeding process is done, but you wanna do it a second time just to be sure. So yeah, I'm gonna fill it up with coolant. And then while it's doing its whole bleeding thing, we're gonna get started on the oil thermostat. 
All right, got the reservoir top off. What I did was I filled it up and then squeezed this hose a couple times, watched the fluid go down a bit. And I just repeated that process a couple times until it kind of stopped moving down. So now it is time to start the bleeding process. We're going to step inside the car, turn the ignition on, put this down to one fan all the way to the max. Make sure the headlights are on all the way. Press on the pedal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So in about five minutes, this thing should start the bleeding process. You'll hear the pump run and then the fluid will go through the cooler and then we'll top it off, do it again. But yes, it literally does take about five minutes. So if you don't hear anything, you don't see anything going on, just keep waiting and then it'll eventually start pumping through. Like I said earlier, while we're waiting for this thing to bleed, we're going to start on this. It looks like there's a couple T-bolts here and we're definitely gonna have to remove this inverted Torx right here, just so we can slide this all the way out. All right, we got it out, pretty easy, pretty simple. There's also a gasket right here that we're going to remove as well because it came with a new one. But this is the orientation of how it all goes. So we'll put this on to the new one like that and then the spring afterwards, just like that. And they do look pretty similar, so this should work out on ours. And then we also have two new bolts to use. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but the bleeding is starting. I don't know if you can see it either, but you can definitely hear that motor running. So yeah, it took a while, um, but it's starting to bleed it now. Let me show you guys something a little bit interesting about this. So this is the OEM one. As you can see, it has some like rubbing marks on it um, because in here, right there where I'm pointing at, it's really hard to see. It's like a flat ridge and that was definitely rubbing on the OEM part right here. So what I did on the new one is do the same thing. I grinded it down a tiny bit with the file and now it sits in there nicely and pushes in and out. Now that's what you want. At first it wasn't like really pushing in and out. So just that little bit of grinding actually helped and now it freely moves inside of there like it's supposed to. All right, we got the old thermostat thing installed. I have the heat sink shooting up this way so that when the fan pulls air through, it kind of like guides it through that way. So that's how I have that set up. That's all done now. The cooler is on its second bleeding process. Should be done here any moment. Now we just have to put the charge cooler pipes on. Oh, there we go. See, the bleeding sequence is done and that should be totally fine now. Just gotta top it off one last time. And now you put on this charge cooler, the valve cover thing back on, and then uh, yeah, the car should be ready to start. All right, there we go guys. It is all done. The engine bay looks so much better, so much more complete with this brand new CSF charge cooler from ECS Tuning. This thing looks freaking sick. And then we also got that thermostat thing in here that makes it pop a little bit more in the engine bay. And man, this thing finally has some cooling mods and we'll finally be able to rip it without worrying about that charge cooler blowing up. <laughs> but yeah, there we go, you guys. Let's give it a quick start. You guys everything seems good everything seems okay i don't see any crazy leaks or anything so it's time to go for a ride but that's pretty much it for the end of this video if you guys like it make sure to leave a like comment subscribe we'll see you guys in the next one peace